The Senate Commerce Committee late Monday scrapped plans for a markup Tuesday morning of wireless spectrum auction legislation that had already been punted several times. Commerce Chair Maria Cantwell, Democrat Washington, attributed the markup's cancellation to the panel's ranking member, Ted Cruz of Texas. Cruz has his own spectrum bill with Senate Minority Whip John Thune, Republican South Dakota, that is considered more industry-friendly and also refrains from spending auction proceeds on a variety of purposes as Cantwell's bill would, such as restoring rural broadband subsidies that ran out last month. We had a chance to secure affordable broadband for millions of Americans, but Senator Cruz said, no, Cantwell said in a statement. He said, no, to securing a lifeline for millions of Americans who rely on the Affordable Connectivity Program to speak to their doctors, do their homework, connect to their jobs, and stay in touch with loved ones, including more than one million Texas families. Cantwell added that Cruz was stoking culture wars rather than considering her spectrum auction bill, which Senator Ben Ray Lujan, Democrat New Mexico, co-sponsored. Senate Majority Leader Charles E. Schumer, Democrat New York, piled on with his own shot at Cruz, citing the Cantwell bill's much-needed and common-sense investments that are being obstructed by the Texans' desire to serve wealthy and well-connected corporations at the cost of working Americans who are struggling to get by. In response, Cruz took aim at the Democrats' bill for delivering subsidies to unsavory constituencies. In his shameless blame game, leader Schumer accidentally revealed what he and his party really think about taxpayers that they are dupes who should be forced to give free internet to illegal aliens, millions to anti-Semitic universities, and billions to megacorporations with no strings attached," Cruz said in a statement. Pathetic and offensive. Earlier in the evening Monday, Americans for Tax Reform President Grover Norquist posted a link to an affiliated group's endorsement of the Cruz Thune Spectrum auction bill, with the following advice to GOP party leadership. Senate Republicans should not tie President Trump's hands by voting for Democrat policy bills this late in an election year. The Federal Communications Commission's spectrum auctions are often used as a revenue raiser by Congress to pay for other spending or to help offset the losses from tax cuts. In addition to renewing lapsed auction authority for five years, the Cantwell bill would use proceeds to fund several Biden administration priorities, including the broadband internet subsidy, a federal grant program for semiconductor manufacturers, national science foundation research programs, and more. A Republican majority with former President Donald Trump back in the White House in 2025 may have other ideas for how to use that revenue, including potentially helping to reduce the cost of extending the tax reductions from his last administration. The language that was expected to be considered by the committee on Tuesday is contained in a substitute amendment reflecting an agreement with the Defense Department and other agencies concerned about giving away too much spectrum for commercial use. Gopal Ratnam contributed to this report. According to a variety of reports, a contentious battle over spectrum between the U.S. Commerce Department and the U.S. Department of Defense DoD, may have finally come to an end. But the U.S. wireless industry might not be pleased at the outcome. However, the contours of that new agreement among agencies within the Biden administration are not clear. It's also unclear whether Congress will be able to pass any legislation built on the deal. Nonetheless, according to one Washington insider who declined to be named, a spectrum pact among various factions within the Biden administration is a huge deal because they usually fight like dogs. The legislation at issue is the Spectrum and National Security Act of 2024, introduced in April by Senate Commerce Committee Chair Maria Cantwell, a Democrat from Washington. Broadly, the legislation seeks to reinstate the FCC's auction authority, clarify the nation's approach to spectrum management, fund the Affordable Connectivity Program, ACP, and add more money to the FCC's Rip and Replace Program. That's clearly a tall order and the bill has been under discussion since its introduction. Moreover, the bill's chances at passage are even more cloudy given the looming presidential election in November. However, several sources this week reported that officials from the Commerce Department, the DOD, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff reached an agreement on how the legislation might handle spectrum management in the U.S. As a result of that broad agreement, the Senate Commerce Committee rescheduled its planned markup of the bill to June 18th. That new agreement may pose problems for the U.S. wireless industry. Our initial analysis is that while it keeps hope alive, we don't believe the wireless industry is on board with the agreement," wrote Blair Levin, a policy advisor to New Street Research and a former high-level FCC official, 
in a note to investors. According to one Washington insider, the new agreement likely paves the way for spectrum sharing in bands, including the lower 3 GHz. That would please the U.S. cable industry but represent a blow to lobbying efforts by the U.S. wireless industry, led by its trade association CDI. Reactions We are concerned that the Spectrum and National Security Act of 2024 focuses too much on the complex topic of dynamic spectrum sharing and omits a pipeline of much-needed mid-band spectrum to meet growing consumer demand, close America's widening 5G spectrum deficit, and counter China's drive to dominate the world's innovation industries. CTIA CEO Meredith Atwell Baker said in a statement in April. CTIA didn't immediately respond to questions from light reading about the reported agreement this week between the Commerce and Defense Departments. However, later on Wednesday, the Trade Association called on legislators to free up more spectrum to meet 5G demand. But a lobbying group backed in part by the nation's biggest cable companies wasted no time in cheering the development. A collaborative compromise between the Department of Defense, Commerce Department, and the Joint Chiefs on Spectrum Use and reauthorizing the FCC's Spectrum Auction Authority would represent a major opportunity to make more dynamically shared spectrum available for commercial use while preserving DoD and incumbent federal agency services, said Tamara Smith, spokesperson for Spectrum for the Future, in a statement distributed to the media. The context and the background the 5G industry has been eyeing spectrum in the lower 3 GHz band for years. U.S. military officials, in past remarks on the topic, have resisted calls for the DoD to release any spectrum in the lower 3 GHz band. Instead, they've only been open to spectrum sharing scenarios. In recent months, though, some DoD officials have expressed support for moving some military users out of the band. Earlier this year, the Biden administration released a broad spectrum plan that calls for a further study into the lower 3 GHz band and how it might be freed up for commercial use. The study is expected to cover a variety of spectrum management mechanisms, from sharing to relocation. However, the government study won't be done until 2026. In the meantime, U.S. wireless companies continue to push for access to more spectrum to meet the growing demands of 5G technology.